A very basic aspect of FSX is setting up the view so that what we see out of the window is as close as possible to what we'd see in real life. Like many things, this is straightforward once you understand it, but it's something a lot of people struggle with. Now I'm going to talk about the view from the virtual cockpit, but everything I say applies just the same if you use a 2D panel. This is because the outside views in FSX are always displayed in a 3D window and when you use a 2D panel you're just displaying a 2D bitmap in a separate window that obscures part of the view. There are three variables we need to manage to set up the view correctly. These are the eye point, the view direction and the zoom setting. These can all be changed on the fly with various keyboard controls or joystick buttons if you've mapped them but the modified values don't get saved for the next time you load the aircraft. The default view settings are loaded with the aircraft from a file called panel.cfg and modifying the views permanently traditionally required us to edit this file to change a bunch of numbers. These days we have more powerful tools and I'm using EZCA to manage my views. What this means is that I can change the eye point view direction and zoom from within FSX and it'll get saved with the aircraft without needing to edit a file. Now the eye point remains more or less fixed as we fly, after all it represents where our head is in the virtual cockpit, but we change the view direction constantly to look in different directions. Traditionally this was done using the hat switch to pan the view or by holding the space bar and moving the mouse, but like a lot of people these days I'm using a head tracker, track IR, which goes a step further by dynamically moving the view direction according to my head movements. Track IR also moves the eye point so I can literally lean forwards or sideways and look around obstructions in the 3D virtual cockpit. With head tracking the eye point and view direction become much more intuitive but we still need to establish the default or home eye point position correctly and this gets loaded with the aircraft each time. I usually do this with reference to the external views by looking at how the visible pilot model relates to the various features of the aircraft structure. But we can't really do this properly until we've addressed the other variable which is the zoom setting because this affects how the cockpit looks from inside. It's not immediately obvious why FSX has a zoom function at all. The 3D view, whether or not you're using the virtual cockpit, simulates the view from the aircraft windows and this isn't zoomable in real life and zoom has an important impact on realism. Zooming in on a distant object isn't the same as moving closer to it. If you have any experience with photography you might recognize that zooming in has the effect of compressing distance. In other words not only do distant objects appear closer they also appear to be closer together and the reverse is also true which is that zooming out or in photography terms using a shorter focal length effectively stretches distance making everything look further away and further apart. At its most extreme this is a bit like looking through binoculars the wrong way around. For a flight simulator we need that view out of the window to look like what we'd see in real life otherwise we won't be able to judge distances correctly and that means it's also vital for judging speed, distance over time in other words, especially in critical phases of flight such as the approach. Staying with the photography parallel, the standard lens for a 35mm camera traditionally has a focal length of about 50mm for the same reason. For that format it produces images that represent perspective and space most naturally. So you can begin to see that being able to change the zoom is actually something of a liability. Only one zoom setting is correct. FSX is equivalent of the 50mm lens you might say and that's the one that most closely matches natural human vision. So which zoom setting is correct? Well we'll get to that but I want to sneak up on it and explain a bit of the rationale. Out of the box FSX behaves in a rather unfortunate way with regard to zoom. What you'll find is on a wide screen monitor the view looks more zoomed in than on an old-fashioned square style monitor and it's not hard to see why. We can see the same features here at the edges of the view but the image has been cropped at the top and bottom and on a monitor with an even wider aspect ratio it'll look different again. In fact for a given zoom factor FSX always draws exactly the same picture regardless of the aspect ratio but resizes it to fill the screen horizontally cropping it at the top and bottom as necessary. For a zoom factor of 1.0 this picture is of a slice of the view measuring about 
35 horizontal degrees. Presumably this number has its origins in what was once a typical desktop monitor. In other words, there's an assumption that the monitor is going to fill about 35 degrees of the horizontal field of view. What this means in practice is that there is no one standard zoom setting that gives a consistent, realistic outside view because it's dependent on the monitor's aspect ratio and physical size. And just to complicate matters, it's generally accepted that on a traditional 4x3 monitor, the most realistic zoom factor is actually 0.75, not 1.0. It's no coincidence that this value, 0.75, is closely related to the shape of the monitor. It's actually 1 over the aspect ratio. And you can calculate the appropriate zoom factor for any monitor simply as height divided by width. So for a 16x9 monitor, the correct zoom factor would be 0.56. If you try this out for monitors of different dimensions, you'll see that the horizontal field of view is now different in each case, but the apparent size and depth of the view is the same on each monitor, as if we're simply looking through a different shaped window onto the same scene. A closer look shows that by calculating the zoom factor like this, what we've actually done is switch things around to keep the vertical field of view consistent across different monitors. In other words, now we get the same picture resized to fill the screen vertically instead of horizontally, and we see extra detail at the sides. To set the zoom this precisely, by the way, you'll need to use the fine adjustments, which are usually mapped to the Shift plus and Shift minus keys. I'm just going to take a small diversion here and point out something else about zoom. You'll notice if you look carefully that things appear slightly stretched out here towards the edges of the view. This is particularly noticeable with the gauges, which are slightly oval instead of round. This is called geometric distortion, and it's a consequence of projecting a 3D scene onto a flat plane. It gets more pronounced as we zoom out, and again, this is something you're probably familiar with in the real world if you've ever taken photos with a wide-angle lens. For example, you might have noticed when you take pictures on your phone camera that faces at the edges of a scene tend to be stretched or kind of egg-shaped. We can only zoom out to 0.3 times in FSX, but as we do so, the effect is more pronounced the wider the aspect ratio of the monitor. So we know how to calculate the proper zoom factor, but there's another problem. I run FSX at 4066 by 1024, and if I calculate the correct zoom factor, it comes out at 0.25. Unfortunately, we can't zoom out this far, as the minimum zoom factor is 0.3. This means that even at maximum zoom, the view out of the window isn't right, and in some aircraft it's also hard to get a decent view of the instruments without moving the eye point back. And of course, moving the eye point back is unrealistic, since you'll appear to be sitting in the wrong position in the aircraft. There is a solution which requires us to edit fsx.cfg and add the following line to the display section. Wide view aspect is an undocumented flag that changes one detail of how fsx renders the view. Instead of assuming a constant horizontal angle of view, if wide view aspect is true, fsx draws a fixed vertical angle. Again, if the zoom factor is 1.0, this is about 35 degrees. The effect of this is that as long as the vertical size remains more or less constant, the view for a given zoom factor will look the same on any monitor, regardless of aspect ratio. Now this sounds very familiar, because it's what we just figured out how to do manually without wide view aspect. But what works immediately in our favour is that the zoomable range of the view is now significantly longer. Remember that the zoom factor multiplies the default or 1.0 view, which as we've seen is much wider when wide view aspect is true, because it's anchored to a fixed vertical field of view rather than a horizontal one. If you don't follow that, don't worry. All you need to know is that when we zoom out as far as possible to 0.3 times, this is much wider than it is when we use the horizontally anchored view. But now we have another problem. Remember, I need to be able to zoom out to 0.25 times to get the right view on my ultra-wide display, but now the numbers are all different. So when we have wide view aspect set, how do we know what zoom setting is equivalent to what was 0.25? Well, there's a formula for that too. For any zoom factor, you calculate its equivalent when wide view aspect is true by multiplying by the aspect ratio of the monitor. 
For example, what was previously the minimum possible zoom factor, 0.3, is now 0.3 times 4066 over 1024, and that comes out as 1.2 times. That means that for this display, with wide view aspect set to true, if we set the zoom to 1.2 times, we get exactly the same view as we get at a zoom setting of 0.3 times with wide view aspect set to false. And more to the point, the value we need, 0.25, oddly enough, comes out to 1.0. Now, if you're of a mathematical disposition, you're probably ahead of me here. But just to make the point, I'll show you that the correct value for a 16 to 9 monitor which we calculated earlier as 0.56, comes out as 0.56 times 16 over 9, or 1.0. And for a 4x3 monitor, what do you know? 0.75 times 4 over 3, also 1.0. Of course, if we combine the previous two formulas, you can see why this is. The ideal zoom is height over width, and the wide view zoom is the same, multiplied by width over height. So it seems that whatever we calculated as the correct zoom factor, that's what we get if we set wide view aspect equals true and zoom equals 1.0. In other words, we don't need any of those formulas at all. All we have to do is set wide view aspect to true, set zoom to 1.0, and we have the correct view for any aircraft on any monitor. Now this correct view needs some slight qualification because you'll remember this assumes your monitor is of a size and at a distance that fills about 35 degrees of the vertical field of view. Obviously if you're sitting with your nose pressed against a 42 inch TV this isn't the case and you need to make some adjustment. The simplest way to do this by eye is to note what features of the view mark the top and bottom of the screen and then zoom out until those features are more or less where the top and bottom of a conventional monitor would be. It should go without saying, but the ability to zoom out further creates the potential for more severe geometric distortion. It's a common misconception that wide view aspect causes this distortion, but it's just a natural consequence of zooming out further. And you can check this out. Setting wide view aspect is just like swapping lenses on a camera. We have two zoom lenses with different but overlapping ranges. And if you compare images in the overlapping region, you find that there's no difference at all. If you stick with 1.0 or close to it, distortion is minimal. Depending on the aircraft, you might choose a slightly wider view to give a better view of the instruments, but there shouldn't be any reason to fly with such exaggerated zoom that distortion becomes a problem. And if you do, you have to accept that you're watching the world through a GoPro camera. If you're using the 2D cockpit, you have another problem to solve. On first sight, it appears that the zoom behaves differently when the 2D panel is displayed. But that's because the view window is squashed, as you can see if you move the panel out of the way. If you stretch the window to fill the screen, the view behaves exactly as described earlier. Of course, keeping the whole panel on screen and having an outside view requires some kind of compromise. So you need to find a solution that works for you. So there it is, wide view aspect equals true. Zoom equals 1.0 and set your eye point with reference to the external views. Let me know if this works for you and I do strongly recommend Track IR and EasyCA for a better all-round experience.